So the next talk will be by Anne Bane, and he will talk about the leading tactic for normalizing ring expression with exponentials, mm -hmm. with exponents, yeah. Okay, thank you. So this is a tactic for the interactive theorem prover lean, which is a proof system based on the calculus of constructions. And it's based around a simple kernel. And then around that is um, an uh, elaborator, which has support for quite advanced tactics. And this tactic um, that, I'm, uh, that I made and uh, that I'm describing here is integrated into Mathlib, which is uh, a community repository of the focusing on classical mathematics both in proofs and proof automation. And I developed it as part of the Lean Forward project where computer scientists work with mathematicians in order to find out uh, yeah, what the needs to be developed to make the proof of automation really useful for mathematicians. And in this specific case, what we had is uh, essentially a mathematician came up to us and said, "Why? well, the following equation, two to the power n plus one minus one is just the same as two, to the, uh, two times two to the n minus one. Like to a mathematician, this is trivial, this should be obvious. And so Lean should do it automatically. And in Lean, uh, there is a tactic based on the um, a ring tactic by uh, Mabubi and Grégoire in Koch, which uses uh, the Horner normal form to prove equations in a ring or a semi-ring. So it supports the operators plus and times. But in this equation that we want to prove above, we don't have uh, just those, but we also have exponentiation by a variable n. And unfortunately, we cannot just easily extend the Horner form to do this, but still we can do it by hand. We just take this uh, equation, a to the n plus one equals a to the n times a, which is uh, already proved in Lean. And if we rewrite using that, then after that, Ring can uh, finish the job for us. But the problem is uh, you cannot just do all these um, rewrite rules as a pre-processing stage, because if you have an expression like x to the power 100, then it will be unfolded into 100 additions of the number one. So we apply the rewrite rule, and we get 100 times the variable x multiplied together. And this blow up would make it uh, really impractical to run. So um, the goal, uh, yeah. So to give some more examples of the kind of things that uh, this tactic should solve. So we have the really trivial case above. Uh, that's basically the same as uh, what we already saw. Then, uh, and as we go on, we see some more complicated applications such as this that is not really obvious. So. Uh, this tactic should work both for the obvious cases, but also for the more complicated cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the goal of uh, this new tactic, which we will call ring x, because it's for uh, expressions in a semi-ring with plus times, but also for exponentials, this uh, power operator, should um, normalize expressions in order to prove equalities. And um, yeah, apart from these operators, it should support numerals, which we represent as rational numbers, and also variables, which is just everything that's not one of the above. And since we already have this ring tactic, we want it to be an extension of ring. So we can just say, if ring doesn't do the job, then we can run ring x. And for that, it should solve all the goals that ring can solve and should be at least as fast. Okay, so it's going to be a normalizing tactic. Uh, well, it is a normalizing tactic. So in order to prove an equality like A equals B, where A and B can be very complicated expressions, then we put both in normal forms. So we normalize A, we get a proof saying that A is equal to some normal form A prime. And we do the same with B, we get a proof that B is equal to some normal form B prime. Then if A prime and B prime are syntactically identical, which is easy to check in the tactic, then we can just apply transitivity and symmetry to get the proof of A equals B. And um, just one note about the design. So um, the ring tactic that uh, was originally in Koch, that was a reflective tactic, but in Lean, um, yeah, we don't tend to write uh, ref reflective tactics since um, the Lean's, uh, yeah, Lean's kernel is not as much optimized for speed as uh, Koch's kernel is. Instead, we use the elaborator. So this runs in a VM, which is optimized for speed. So we lose some advantages of the reflective tactics, which we have to uh, counter with good engineering. So to give you an idea of the normal form, uh, you don't need to understand all the code on this slide, but it will um, 
I will explain some uh, features of it. So the idea is we represent these expressions that we have as a syntax tree and, and we don't want the, the full generality of any syntax tree, but we want to restrict some, uh, yeah, which children certain nodes can have. So if you look at the associativity uh, rule, then let's say all additions should be right associative. So we should not have a plus on the left-hand side of another plus. And that is why in this uh, sum constructor, we say that the product, that there must be a product on the left-hand side of the sum and a sum on the right-hand side. And this is guaranteed by the type system because we have this type family X, which is indexed over this enumeration X type. And not only does it do this associativity rule, it will also guarantee distributivity of um, multiplication over addition. Because again, we have this um, prod constructor and we don't want a plus on the right-hand side and it must be a multiplication on the right-hand side. So this is a very basic idea. And then what we do is we take our expression, we interpret in this uh, X data type, and then we uh, turn it back into an expression to get our normal form. But to this basic plans, we need to be um, careful on some certain parts. So first of all, we have associativity and distributivity. We also want commutative operators. And for that, we pick a linear order on, uh, the, uh, yeah, on the expressions. And then what we say is if we have um, a string of additions, a plus b plus c and so on, then we want all the terms in this addition to be in this uh, linear order. So a should be less than b, should be less than c, etc. And this allows us um, also to do the next feature quite nicely. So as I said in the introduction, we don't want this unfolding of uh, coefficients. So we don't want 100 times a to be a plus a plus a plus a 100 times. And similarly, we don't want a to the power 100 to be 100 multiplications of a. So instead, in this um, normal form, we keep track of the coefficients. And there is a function that decides exactly when to add these coefficients. So if we have three times x squared, and seven times x squared, because these are both monomials, the same monomials, then we add the coefficients. But if the monomials differ, then we don't add the coefficients, we just get a sum. And the final case is if the coefficients cancel out, then the whole term cancels out to zero, not the coefficient zero multiplied to x squared. And by picking this linear order on the uh, expressions such that if the monomials are the same, then the terms will be adjacent, we can apply this function in one linear scan. Okay, and the final uh, thing that we have to be careful with is if you want to generalize this to uh, uh, any semi-ring, like let's say the integers, then you don't have exponentiation from integers to integers giving an integer because you would give uh, you could a fraction or a square root. So we only get uh, exponentiation for um, natural numbers. And so during execution, you have to switch between which type you are working in to construct this normal form. And the ring x tactic has a reader monad transformer on top of the lean's built-in uh, tactic monad which keeps track of this current type. Okay. So the goal of the ring X tactic is not only, uh, it's very important that it's practical, like people in MathLib would actually need to use it. And so um, we need some optimizations to do this because especially because the ring tactic uses this Horner normal form and you can prove that a Horner form is optimal for um, a certain set of um, of expressions, it has the smallest uh, representation and so it will also be the smallest runtime. And therefore, um, there are some uh, yeah, optimization passes that uh, I need to do before we could uh, merge this ring X tactic. And the most important one is to deal with the hidden uh, arguments, so type class instances and implicit arguments, because it will cost some time to infer during um, construction of the proof term. So we must cache them. So instances are stored with the current type that is also in the reader monad. So together with remembering in which uh, ring we are working like R or N, we also store all the relevant operations like how to represent plus in this ring. 
and we also need to store the implicit arguments and intermediate values so they can plug in later to the constructor proof. And these are stored in a field in X, which is uh, which is basically treated as an opaque type. So you can easily add more uh, intermediate values in case you need them later. Okay, so um, yeah, when I uh, ran some tests on uh, ring and ring X to compare the, the speed, uh, it was just generating a random expression and then seeing the running time. And when you do this, you will see that the running time is approximately in the same order of magnitude. So ring is a bit faster because it has less to deal with and it uses a, a more optimal normal form, which unfortunately we cannot use anymore for ring X. And, um, but as soon as you get into the problem domain for ring, where ring X was really designed for. So if you have, for example, larger exponents like 50 or 100, then ring X is noticeably faster, like 20 times. And this also happens in some um, yeah, problems that users of uh, Mathlib actually reported that they said, I'm very happy because ring X really runs a lot faster than ring on these uh, examples. And the other advantage, ex except for the larger domain, is in fact that we can increase it a bit more. So right now we have added the exponent operation, but it's also possible to add other algebraic um, operators, like for example, a maximum, or we can generalize it to a lattice because this uh, abstract syntax tree design of the normal form makes it quite easy to just plug in a new operator. You just add a new node and a new um, index to the type family. So this was a very quick overview of uh, the ring tactic, ring X tactic, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions from the audience? <clears throat> So, so are there any uh, kind of specific applications which make use of rings or is it just a kind of uh, mm -hmm. toy yeah. example um, to say it maybe in a bit more, yeah? No, it's really uh, integrated in the, in the mathematical library. So uh, when I was developing, I identified a few portions uh, which were working with like polynomials with a general degree like x to the n. Uh, and after that, also the other users of Mathlib have started to uh, integrate their uses of the tactic. Okay. Yeah. I see a question in the chat. I see there's a question. Yeah, there's a question. Um, can you read it? So does Lean allow use of these ring tactics on concrete instances of rings? Yes. So um, you can really just have uh, variables of type. Uh, Z or Q, like uh, actual integers or uh, rational numbers. And it will, um, yeah, with using type class inference, it will just run the tactic with no problem. Okay, thank you. So, is there no more questions? Um, thank you very much. Thank you.